morning, everyone. Uh, we welcome to those at, at home. Uh, welcome to our service here of Holy Communion at St. Mary Magdalene with St. Martin, Addiscombe, Croydon. A very special welcome to all who are joining us uh, on YouTube. Uh, in here is, uh, according to the government guidelines, we can't sing. So those who are in here, we will be having, however, the choir singing through uh, during communion. But for the rest of us, uh, we have to stay silent. Of course, for those at home, uh, you can uh, uh, sing as, as, as loud as you want. Uh, we won't have uh, um, refreshments, once again, because of uh, the guidelines. Uh, so as soon as we finish the service, please leave as promptly as you can. We can't also pass the basket around as we normally would do for uh, offering, uh, but at the end of the service, uh, there is the card reader on my left at the uh, welcome table, so please uh, do avail yourself to that. Uh, the toilets are open at Magdalen Center. Uh, sanitizing rules uh, are in place, so please follow those. We'll have a moment of silence or reflection as we uh, welcome the Holy Spirit to come and guide us through this service. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We remain seated as we have our next song. <laughs> preparation. As we do so, we remember that we come before a holy God, and we bring those issues before us, before our mighty God, the things that we have done or not done that are not pleasing to him. We say it together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor 
as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say it together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon, deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll stand as we hear the Gloria. Please stand. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We say together the collet for today. Our God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as Pat now comes to read us first uh, the letter to the Ephesians, and then we will stand when she comes to do the gospel reading. Pat. So the first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Uh, for the second reading, hear the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. It's um, chapter 16, verses 5 to 12. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch out and be aware, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They said to one another, It is because we have brought no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? And how could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Hear the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Bread Week was two weeks ago. Uh, if you were listening to the reading uh, just now, um, then perhaps you'll see where I'm heading. Uh, we're thinking about bread, about baking a good loaf. More of that later. We're coming to the end of a series thinking about when faith holds on by its fingernails. So far, We've been looking at when faith is not sideways by worries and anxieties, and when faith is blown out of the water in, fa in the face of fear and crisis. And let's face it, we've had our basin full of these lately. But today we're looking at faith coming under fire from those who deal in doubt, those who are intent on sowing doubt and undermining our faith. Jesus, once again, uses the term, O oh, you of little faith, not particularly accusing his disciples of anything. I sometimes think in terms of this as an affectionate dig at his followers. After all, sometimes he called them his little ones. And in the same way as one of my tutors at college sometimes recommended books for us, for us bears of little brain. Not at all in a humiliating way, he was a, an A.A. Milne fan. For Jesus, the doubt sowers, the faith destroyers, the darkness spreaders, were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And though they were different parties in the Jewish religious hierarchy, the Sadducees had the higher political power, and though they had very different beliefs, particularly over God's supernatural intervention and the resurrection of the dead, they were, by and large, united in their fanaticism about the law, their protection of their position, and their resistance to Jesus and his gracious and forgiving words and deeds. They'd just been on an examining mission to check up on Jesus. More accurately, to find fault with Jesus. And they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. Do a miracle for us, they said, to validate your message. Of course, 
This was just the same as when Satan suggested to Jesus that he should throw himself down from the temple tower to authenticate his status. Jesus and the twelve were on a boat trip across the Sea of Galilee and someone had forgotten to bring their lunch. And During the discussions about that, Jesus talked about a bigger picture, taking an image that they knew from every day, bread making. Making the family bread was a daily job. The woman of the house, and it was usually the women, spent two or three hours every day making bread for the family. And it was hard labour. The key was the yeast. A piece of yesterday's dough left overnight to pick up more fungi out of the air and to go bad, to ferment. It was then added to a fresh dough mix and the art was to make sure that this was evenly distributed around the new dough mix and so a lot of kneading was needed. Kneading yeast into the bread made the bread rise, of course. And it would take a good deal of time to do this. When we think back several hundred years before, when it, when it came to the escaping, uh, the Israelites escaping Egypt, hundreds of years before, the Israelites had to run for their lives as fast as possible. So they were told to prepare bread for the coming journey, but to prepare it fast, without yeast without rising. There'd be no stopping to make bread for some time, so the biscuit-style unleavened bread was their ration. When it came to celebrating this escape from Egypt, the unleavened bread was the centerpiece. The feast of unleavened bread lasts for seven days. After all, it was this that sustained the people during those crisis days. It also had the advantage as a drier biscuit type of bread that it lasted lo a bit longer than softer risen bread which went bad in the Palestine humidity. As a result, yeast acquired a notoriety. The image was there that unleavened bread was good and yeast was used as a picture of what was bad. That sin mixed into life through our lives, through our family life, through our society, throughout history, yeast would make life go bad. Sin would make life go bad. Leaven, yeast, was associated in the, in the festival with going bad. When they celebrated, celebrated Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they had to ensure there was no yeast anywhere in the house. The house was thoroughly cleaned out. If you think that we have cleaning uh, at the moment with COVID around, uh, that, that, that was precisely what they had to do at the time of Unleavened Bread. Yeast became a picture of sin, of anything going against God's ways. So, when Jesus warns his followers against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees, he's imagining their lives as a bread mix. Their whole life is a bread-making task. You can choose to spread bad yeast through your life or make good Passover bread. Jesus said that if you take your cue from the Pharisees and Sadducees, you're going to mix into your life so much that is legalistic, judgmental, unforgiving, materialistic, cynical and hypocritical. Stuff that's hostile to trust in Jesus and destructive of your faith and the faith of others around you. So, Paul was to point out later to Christians in Galatia that a little of the yeast, this yeast, works through the whole batch of dough. 
through a life, through a family, through a church, through a community. It's pervasive. It will affect the whole. Faith will come under attack if you take their attitudes on board. Last week, as Anand was bringing his sermon to a close, I noticed something at the front of the church. Every week, we see the lettering, F-A-I-T-H, on the floor at the foot of the communion table. Unfortunately, our faith was tottering a little. I was holding it up. Well, not me, but the letter I. I began to think, well, when we face anxiety, our faith may totter. When we face crisis, our faith might even crumple. But the difference with the Pharisees and the Sadducees was that they didn't just doubt. They'd rearranged their whole thinking so that faith in God became something else. Hate. That's why Jesus also warned about the unforgivable sin. Actually rearranging our thinking to twist goodness, love and faith into what is bad and destructive. If you put that into your bread mix of life, you will end up with a toxic loaf. Jesus spoke of bread at another time. He said, I am the bread of life. He is the essential, the daily essential, the one everyone needs for survival and sustenance. He is the good bread, the life-giving one, and you can be sure that he's the best. Now that means that if we're making a life loaf, then we're to make it after his pattern, after his quality. In Bake Off, we always get to see Prue Leaf or Paul Hollywood's own attempt at what they're telling the contestants to do. That's the pattern, the aim. And boy, do they turn out well, especially compared with the contestants. As we make our bread, our life bread, we're to make our lives like his, modelled on him, filled with him, being like him. And unlike Bake Off, we get to discover and see more about Jesus while we're making our loaf. So what do we do when our faith comes under, a, under fire, when we realise there's an attack on our trust in Jesus, an attack like the Pharisees and Sadducees, a temptation to be cynical, to turn on our faith. First, we need to recognise it for what it is. It may come in various guises. Not all attacks are confrontational. Satan's oldest and first attack was simply to sow doubt about what Eve had understood. He didn't even directly challenge God. He just said to Eve, Did God say this? Are you sure? Did you misunderstand or mishear? Surely that doesn't make sense. It may come in the form of cynicism. Some places may just, may be just right to sow cynicism. The staff room, the changing room, the, the chat room, all sorts of places. So recognize it for what it is. But second, Arm yourself with God's armour. I ask for Paul's uh, picture of the armour of God to be read. When we're tempted to be cynical, to deny or twist our faith, put on that armour. Take the shield of faith. Remind yourself of the way that God has led and blessed over the years. Let Reminders of this faithful God strengthen your faith. Then there's the breastplate of righteousness, 
the lifestyle. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Bible. Get to know it. Get to use it. And the belt of truth. Remind yourself of the truth of the gospel you've discovered over the years and learned to trust. Third, get yourself a wingman or wingwoman. A wingman is a pilot who flies behind or alongside the leader of a flying formation. The wingman is there to back up, defend and protect the main pilot. In this situation, we need a wingman, a wingwoman. Someone alongside us to support and defend, to help protect and advise us. Someone who isn't fearful of being honest about us. And who won't shrink from asking challenging questions. Someone you can be honest with. A spouse may be excellent in that position as a helpmeet, but sometimes perhaps a bit too close and involved. Sometimes you need someone totally outside your circle. I was fortunate for 25 years to have such a wingman. Martin was a great confident empathizer, challenger and listener. He took me through many crises in my life and I don't know where I'd be without him. In the same way, I, as, as I was propping up faith, so sometimes I can prop up someone's faith and sometimes I need someone to prop up mine too. Fellowship means we look out for each other Though, of course, we also need to make sure that we don't overwhelm each other, expecting them to take my help when they already have someone. Back to Bake Off. With the music. So, for today's signature challenge, Jesus wants you to make a loaf, not a showstopper, just a good, wholesome, healthy, life-giving, fruity loaf, made with the best ingredients, all of which are provided, with yeast from the best supplier. And we'd warn you against making it from your own ingredients. Your model for this challenge will be the bread of life. There will be lots of really hard work kneading the dough, ensuring the yeast of God's love is well distributed into every part, and lots of fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Lots of that will be put into your mix. And when you've completed the challenge, Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servant, and that actually counts far higher than a Paul Hollywood handshake. And you have one lifetime to do it in. So, on your marks, get set, bake. Thank you, Brian, for that wonderful message. We'll continue to reflect on that message as we stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. Shall we stand? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shall we sit as we have our intercessions brought to us? Let us offer up our prayers in faith to our loving Heavenly Father. Loving Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together in worship, even in these restricted times. We pray for those who are unable to be with us in person and thank you for the technology which allows them to join in from their homes. We remember those who are not free to worship you openly or to declare their faith at any time. May they know your presence with them and may we not take for granted the freedoms we enjoy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all in authority, especially those who are making important decisions about how we react to each phase of the pandemic. Give us patience as we adapt to new restrictions and play our part in stopping the spread of the virus. May those in positions of trust act with wisdom and integrity and in turn be treated with respect. We ask for guidance for those who are engaged in negotiations about a post-Brexit trade agreement so that a fair and just solution may be found to the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all in need of your healing touch and comfort at this time. We especially remember those who are fighting the effects of COVID, undergoing long-term treatment, the frail, and those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We lift to you those who work in our hospitals and care homes as they tend the sick and vulnerable. Give them patience, compassion, and strength for the difficult job they do in these times. We pray for university students who are facing a disrupted start to their academic year and for the safety of the children and staff in our schools at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as the weather turns colder, we marvel at the changing colours of the trees, but we remember the needs of the homeless. We thank you for the work of Night Watch in Croydon, meeting some of those needs every night of the year. We thank you too for the work of local food banks and for the blessing they are to many at this time. Give us hearts to support these and other initiatives to help those less fortunate than ourselves in whatever way we can as a way of sharing your love and being your hands and feet here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Powerful Lord, as we face the coming week, we ask you to clothe us with the armour we need to face every situation ahead of us. May we put our total trust in you as we cast our worries, fears and doubts on you. Help us to grow in faith as you reach out to us wherever we are. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Now Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples and said to them, to them, Peace be with you. Now the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another at a distance. We come now to our time for communion. When you come to receive communion, when you're in the main body of the church, as we've been doing since uh, we've opened up, just come singly towards me with your hand out and I will stretch my arm out. That makes us two metres distant. So anybody sitting in this area, I will come and stand around here. Just come singly one by one so that you don't have to walk all the way around the church. When you come up for communion, could you return by another way <laughs> so that you're not passing each other in the center aisle. Thank you very much indeed. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and in Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends he took bread, and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
We prayed the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. going to hear our final song before the notices and the blessing. Thank you. of things to draw your attention to for the coming week and that is that next Sunday uh, for many years has been the last, well it is the last Sunday in October has been the day upon which we look to raise our offerings for our missions, we call it our missions gift day and you should have received by email information about the different societies that we support financially and how to go about making that offering so we could have that focus for next Sunday. So if you are able to give generously towards our giving to mission, please be sure to do that this week if you can, or the week after if you can't. And Christopher will be able to locate the different amounts 
offered so that we are able to rejoice together in raising the amount of money that has been set as our target this year. So that's next Sunday is our focus for Missions Gift Day because we can't collect, as you know, our offerings as we normally have done in the past with a basket or a plate. We ask you to make those offerings electronically if you can or uh, leave an envelope here on the giving table as you come in next week or the following week if that's easier for you. Just to say a big thank you, and I, I, I have never wanted to be the one who feels they have to tell people off, but unfortunately clergy don't have to tell people off, but we have to rem I have to remind ourselves of the restrictions that we do still have to worship under, which includes remaining two metres apart. And I know what it's like, I get friendly talking to somebody and I forget to put my mask on and I get a bit too close. So I'm not being rude when I tell you to go back. <laughs> so it's just to remind us and in church, uh, it's, we can think when we're standing in the aisles talking to somebody who's sitting down, we're farther away than we think until we turn around and find somebody else hasn't noticed that, they're behind, that we're behind them and they're actually back to back, only about four inches apart. Um, so it's just these reminders aren't to be crossed. They're just to say we just do have to carry on being careful. The other thing, just to say, if it's possible for you not to park in front of the church, we um, restricted that right at the beginning of lockdown. It was really helpful because people could just come out, they could mill around, and I'm sure at two metres distance, talk to one another without fear of being run over and with plenty of space to do that in. Clearly, if you need to drop somebody off near the door, you must do that. And if you have a blue badge, then you're fully entitled to park. But do please make sure you park as close to the building and all the grass as you can. Um, that's be quite vital. The other day, somebody quite unintentionally reversed their car and there were two or three people behind them chatting. And I can see those sort of incidents might be increasing over time. Thank you for that. And just to let you know that um, we're going to have for just for six six of our leaders or preachers um, a 24-hour period of prayer and fasting for our church family and for what the Lord is asking of us during this very long-term time that we're in. So do be praying as well. <coughs> you may fast as well if you'd like to. And if you do pray for our church family and the Lord's guidance, you have uh, a word or a picture or a scripture that's really helpful, just email it to me. We'll get there more directly if it comes to me, but you could equally email it to Craig in the church office and we can put them together and share that with you next Sunday. So as we come to the end of our service, thank you to those of you who are watching for being with us this morning. We pray that you know the Lord's blessing around your table at home as we do here gather together. We come to the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.